So um, my talk this morning is on um, congenital talpes equina varus or club foot. Um, interesting topic. It's a big topic, but um, go through the basic concepts. Uh, effectively, we're just going to run through the epidemiology, the actual uh, and how to work up a child with this condition uh, and the different options we have for treatment. Start with uh, clubfoot is a congenital deformity that is 50% uh, uh, of cases uh, seen in, uh, bilaterally affected. Also seen more often, more commonly in males. Uh, there's also some family history uh, component to it. And an Australian study identified risk factors as males, uh, pa patients of anemia or hyperemesis having kids with. There are some associated conditions with um, seen in club. Uh, they may include spina bifida, anomalies of the urinary or digestive. Uh, system and other musculoskeletal abnormalities like Reader's dysplasia, which is um, uh, diastrophic dysplasia, type of dwarfism, arthrogryposis, which effectively means multiple joint uh, tibial hemimelia, that's the extract. Uh, going through the pathoanatomy, um, uh, effectively there are a few components to it. So the hind foot um, is an equinus in varus. Our neck has uh, both calcaneus has some medial rotation as well as the cubic. And the forefoot is adductus and plant. So the in the hind foot, so the tail and neck is shortened and deviated medially. So that's the pink. Side. The calcaneus is medially rotated in the, in the uh, which you can't quite see there. Sure. Going through club. Uh, as a result, the navicular is pushed medially. And the forefoot four and midfoot. Um, to break it down to the individual deformity, so there's equinus, um, which is plantar flexion at the ankle joint, varus uh, at the subtalar joint, adduction at the um, tail and avicular, so through here, avus, uh, which involves. As a result, uh, there are soft tissue contractures which involve the medial side, so tip post is a significant subtalar joint and uh, also in the Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 
this is a diagram from Miller's that's comparing the different deformities. So the middle is a normal foot. In the talus spine. Um, in club foot, the, there is um, hind foot varus, so the calcaneus. Contrast uh, different foot. There, there's normal hind foot um, alignment, but the forefoot or just the metatarsal. There are different ways of class classifying uh, hallux valgus. I mean, sorry, um, and uh, it can be done in an etiological classification. And there are also uh, uh, two classifications that look more. At so, uh, as positional, idiopathic, or teratologic coverage um, is associated with some of those. Other Um, positional club foot is thought to result in late gestation, so is less severe. Um, idiopathic has an in, There's also a demiglio classification which is based on the stiffness of the foot. So looking at ranges of motion and each are given points to grade severity. And the Pirani classification, which is thought to be easier to use, um, has some prognostic significance, but um, um, so this provides a numeric score based on hind foot and midfoot scores. So midfoot midfoot looks at the lateral foot. When examining a child with um, with a cruise position, um, there's a few different features to look at. Generally, there's not a, a large leg length discrepancy as most of um, there's a range seen from 14 to 25 mm. <coughs> um, The calf on the on the affected side is usually smaller than the affected side, which, unaffected side, which. Um, And um, the entire foot is shortened compared to the normal size. It's also important to screen uh, the child for other conditions, um, although our CTEB is not <coughs> the hip and um, And uh, on examination, this is a range of And again, making sure that you're not missing when uh, Regarding investigation, so um, club foot uh, can be picked up antenatally, although there is a 17% um, and in the non-ossified skeleton, ultrasound. Uh, but regarding x-rays, there are a range of different views and angles that we can look at too. Uh, first of all, looking for the equinus, so the tibial calcaneal angle, which is this red one. Best in um, a turquoise view, which is maximal dorsiflexion of the foot. And um, a normal uh, foot is 10 degrees above. Uh, looking at the varus, um, so on the lateral x ray, um, looks at how parallel it should actually be at 35.
on the IP X-ray, which I'll show you in a sec, there's a um, Taylor calcaneal or kite angle, um, which is between the talus and the foot, and it should be around 20 to 40 degrees. And in the club foot, um, Um, Midfoot adduction and varus can be assessed using the calcaneo cuboid alignment and also the talus first, which is um, so. Um, this is a, another X ray and. An, an AP, the narrow Taylor calcaneal angle. Natural history of untreated club foot is um, is progressive. In a progression in the principles of management are to correct the deformity but to maintain the mobility and um, and uh, uh, so I'm going to go more in detail on the Fonsetti method, um, which was uh, developed by a uh, studied in the University of. He was the son of a watchmaker, and they think that uh, this may who developed this uh, now world renowned. Uh, he initially produced it in the 1950s, but it was ignored for multiple years until. This paper came out in 1995 that uh, showed a 30 year follow up of the technique. Which um, and overall, it showed reduced complications and, and better outcomes. So, the Ponsetti method um, looks at serial, well, uses serial casting or weekly casting of the that's done, started soon after birth if the club foot's picked up and uh, if started before nine months of age, most kids can be um, it uh, basically uh, works on the principle of allowing the joint surfaces of the bone to shape into a more normal position and uh, advises over correction of the foot so that for example the last plastic cast is So I've broken, it's broken down into a few steps. First of all, which I'll go through, um, first of all, correct the cavus, varus um, and inversion, uh, then the equinus, and then there may be a bracing period as well. So to start with, um, correcting the cavus involves um, supination and uh, of supination and inversion of keeping the forefoot keeping the forefoot supinated while um, um, because the deformity is is a pronated forefoot makes that uh, people were making prior to this method. The subsequent casts involve um, correcting the various to allow that navicular to come around. By the end of the correction, we should have an improved. Um, The 
this is a uh, some of the pictures of the paths as they progress through the weeks. Uh, the next step prior to the fifth cast application is um, is an Achilles tenotomy effect. And uh, this often increases the and the fifth cast is applied in abduction and dorsiflexion. The kids are then put in a full time brace for three months, which um, looks like this. The abnormal foot's put in seventy degrees. Um, I say that kicking in the brace helps the baby to strengthen to counteract the deformed forces. After the three month period there, it's then continued on for um, recurrence of the condition may require long leg cut. Um, surgical correction uh, includes soft tissue and bone structures. So these are the structures that were from the other sl earlier slide. Of There's a range of different um, structures that can be addressed in surgical. And lastly, there's a few. Bony corrections such as osteotomy and arthrodermy. Um, so, as I mentioned, those that are treated with the concept outcome to, compared to the our limited long term studies available. So, in summary, um, clubfoot pathoanatomy involves hind foot minus and varus, medial implantal deviation at the tail and neck, medial rotation of 